Have you ever wondered what it's like to be 4-1 up, losing the game in Trials of Osiris, just, just so close to the lighthouse, and it's 4-1, you, you just think it's over right then and there, right? When you see that 4, you know you're never coming back, and all your hopes at the lighthouse are gone, but... Today, I'm going to try to give you guys some tips and show you guys what it takes to come back from a 4-1 game. Anytime that you guys find yourself in this situation, especially when you're on your lighthouse game, I just want to help you guys give some tips. Hopefully, you guys can take something from this. And next time you're in this situation, you will be able to do what me and my team did here today and actually come back from a 4-1 deficit on our lighthouse game just a couple days ago back on a Widow's Court. Now, the most important thing that you want to remember if you're ever behind in a game, whether it's 4-1, 4-4, whatever the situation may be, Whenever you're in a Charles Osiris game and you want to win and it's getting really close to the end and you just don't really know what's going to happen, it's really best just to keep in mind that you can win at any time, any point in time. No matter if you're the last Guardian standing or not, you really just need to know that you still can win. It's best not to think that the game is over before it actually is, otherwise you're never going to win. If you don't believe that you can actually come back, it's really cheesy to say it, but there's no way you ever will. So you definitely need to just know that it is possible to come back from pretty much any deficit. So long as you're trying hard enough and you and your team have the right communication, you can pretty much come out of any situation just with a little bit of teamwork. So when you're in a 4-1 deficit or any deficit at all, what you want to do is you and your teammate need to set up exactly what you're going to be doing the round before it actually happens. Whether it be that all you guys are sticking together or two people go one way and one guy splits off to try to distract people, you guys need to know what you're going to do the round beforehand. Also, on specific maps, especially like Widow's Court, when you can get a really quick and easy snipe at the beginning of a round, you want to try to have your best player, or at least your best sniper, go ahead and peek that sniper lane and try to get a snipe as soon as possible. As you can see here, I actually tried to attempt to do that and failed, but luckily enough, my teammates were able to back me up. They got my res as quickly as possible, and sometimes actually dying while trying to get that first kill is all you really need to do to initiate something to happen. And then you or your teammates can easily get a kill because the other team will get distracted or try to rush, trying to prevent you from getting that res, and that's how you end up getting a bunch of your kills, and that's how you end up getting the advantage. Now the second most important thing to worry about when you're trying to come back from a game is the supers. You and your teammates need to conserve your supers as much as possible, and you also need to know what the enemy has in regards to their supers as well. If one of them has a blade dancer, you need to know, okay, well when he pops his blade, I'm going to pop my tether on it. And you need to know and have that planned out before they actually pop their supers. That way, when they do, it's not a big giant surprise. And you're not just like wondering, all right, well, whose super is going to get used? And that way, you don't waste any. And two tethers don't get popped on the same blade or anything like that. You need to make sure that you don't waste any supers. And anytime orbs of light are generated, you want to make sure you, you, or your teammates pick those up so that they can get their supers back as well. When it really comes down to it, and if a round ends up getting to the point where the zone spawns in, the supers are really the big deciding factor in the game, and it's the most important part when you're coming back from a big deficit especially. There's going to be times where the other team will actually get their supers twice, and you really need to be on top of that, otherwise you're never going to be able to come back. Now the next tip I can give you guys when you're trying to come back from a deficit is that anytime that you get a kill on an enemy, you want to make sure that you guard that res as much as humanly possible. You, you want to make sure that once you have an enemy down, that they never get back up. That way you can pretty much guard their res, and at some point the enemies are going to most likely come for that res as well. And it can act as a pretty big distraction if you know where the enemy is already going to come. You can get set up, get a sniper ready, or get a grenade ready to be tossed as well. And if worse comes to worse and they do get the res, you can always get a res snipe, which is just going to give you extra special energy in the end. Now the next tip to give you guys, and I know this is kind of obvious, but it, it's also very important as well. What you want to make sure that you're doing is that if you know that one person is better than you on your team and they're going to be able to get the sniper kills a lot easier than you can, you want to make sure that they're the ones that are peeking every angle. Anytime that you think there's a sniper somewhere, you want to have your best sniper go ahead and try to kill the person. If you have some of your worst players or people that get super nervous towards the end of your card or just in really sweaty situations, what you want to make sure is that you keep them calm as long as possible if you're kind of like the leader of your fire team. You want to make sure that you keep them calm just kind of make sure that they know what they're doing at every round. Just make sure that you call out like, alright, we're going right, we're going right. Just to remind them, just in case they're a little bit uh, nervous or something like that. I know that does happen a lot when I'm trying to play trials. People will get super nervous and that's how they end up messing up. But in the end, it's super easy if you just stay calm. So you do need to make sure that you know what is going on. Now, like what I was saying before, your best player is the one that wants to make sure to get that first kill. Because like I said, once that first kill is down, it's a lot easier just to guard that res. So you want to have your best player or at least the guy that's the least nervous trying to get those kills, at least at the start. So it's very important for people to just stay alive. If you end up going down, what I said before is going to happen to your team, and that's not really good. The whole team is just going to rush you and make it so that you can't get the res up, and that's exactly what you don't want to happen. You want to try doing that to the other team. And as you can see, me and my team end up doing that pretty well. As soon as I get this first snipe, we're pretty much on top of it, guarding it. Now, unfortunately, the other team knew what I was doing. They knew I was defending the res, so they immediately started sniping it. 
and they ended up getting a pretty easy headshot on me. So that's what I was talking about before when a res can actually act as a giant distraction because they're going to automatically assume that I'm going for the res and they can easily get a kill when I do. And that's pretty much what you guys want to try to do when you're in that situation is just try to be the one to get that kill. And that way you can get in a 2v3 situation or a 3v1 situation and it's extremely hard to lose when it's like that. So once your whole team is up, it's a lot easier just to take down enemies and just keep that communication going throughout the game. And you should be able to get those picks and get those kills and actually end up making a pretty good attempt at coming back. Now another pretty common tip I can give you guys, but it's also pretty helpful, is to just keep track of your ammo. If you see that you're running low and you see just the slightest chance like I did right there, how I could just immediately, I knew, alright I've got like 5 seconds before anyone's going to rush me or something like that. Let me run back and get the special ammo just in case they get a res off, I'm going to need that ammo for a res snipe. And just in case I miss, I'm not as accurate as I think I'm going to be, it's always a good idea to have the extra reserve on you. So I always do try to pick up as much special as possible, and it's also important to try to keep the enemies away from the special also, because if they don't have any sniper ammo, they can't really do much, it's really hard for them to res snipe you, or to really make any real moves in the beginning of the round, so they can't really get any sniper kills that makes them have to rush you. So controlling the special ammo is also pretty important, but it's not the most important thing, it's just something to kind of do on the side if you get the chance in between the rounds or just while a lot of enemies are down you want to just go around and pick up as many boxes as you can now luckily here we are in a 4-4 so this is where it all really is going to come down to everything all the tips have to kind of just come into play all at once in this round once it's 4-4 now luckily one of our teammates had scory's revenge which allowed all of our teammates to get our supers back this is like the second super round we've had as a team now we also knew that the other team had supers. We knew that they had a golden gun, maybe possibly a tether if the guy got enough kills. So we were playing kind of far back. Now we didn't want to wait too long because we knew the longer we waited, the more super energy we were going to give the opposite team. So what our plan was is we knew we had a bubble if the flag ended up spawning in, but the only problem was the golden gun. We knew that the golden gun could easily just two shot down the bubble and we were pretty much left defenseless. So all we were trying to do was get a quick sniper kill on that hunter. Once we knew that the golden gun was down, we knew for a fact that we would be a better chance of winning. So what we were doing is we were staying as a team. One person would kind of stay back, but and one or two people would push up a little bit, trying to find out where they were on the radar. And then that way we would kind of trade off with the sniper kills and stuff like that. Anytime that someone would call out where they were, we could fall back and no one was ever really left behind. And I could just check, make sure no one was behind us. And if they were, get a pretty easy and quick snipe. Now we're all staying very low, we're staying out of the sniper lanes, making sure that no one gets a headshotted. Just keep in mind where players go every single round, a lot of people will like to go to the same spots every single round. And also a very quick tip as well to remember the supers is to pick up the class item. If you know the golden gun has a specific tape on like I did in this scenario, that's very important to do that. If you see a specific class item or just a specific piece of gear that they're wearing that's something easy to remember, like the guy here, he had a red cloak so I just really knew, okay red cloak means the gunslinger. It's very important because in this situation, I knew this was the golden gun, and I also knew that without the golden gun dying, we were going to lose this round. So the second that I saw him, I was able to just know, okay, I need to kill this guy under any means necessary if we're not going to win unless this goldie gets down. So as soon as I could pop my tether on him, I could. And I pretty much saved the round by doing that, because who really knows what would happen if that golden gun got popped off. Now right here is where everything got crazy. It's a 4-4 game. This is literally the game for the lighthouse. After we get this win, we're going to the lighthouse. So if you ever find yourself in a situation like this, I know it's extremely, extremely nerve-wracking. I'm not going to lie, I also get extremely nervous anytime that I'm in a sweaty situation like this. I get extremely nervous, and it's really hard to actually think clearly when you're in that situation. So this is a pretty crazy situation. Both my teammates are down. It's 4-4. And this is where all of the tips that I was talking about before really come into play. So I'm staying calm. I realize that the guy wastes his super, and my teammates are calling out where the guys are. Now by doing that, it takes a lot of the pressure off of me and allows me to get these two easy, easy kills as the other team was probably extremely nervous as well. I was able to get these two kills extremely easily and get this guy his flawless card. So it was a pretty awesome game. I was pretty amazed when we came back. And all in all, everything about this game ended up being pretty insane. Disregard my loss, that's just because I didn't pop boons. This was all for the other guy to get his flawless, but he ended up getting his flawless. It was a pretty awesome game. So hopefully these tips help you guys out. If you're ever in a 4-4 loss, let me know the biggest deficit that you guys have ever came back from the trials of Osiris in the comments down below. Hopefully these tips help you guys out, and I will catch you guys tomorrow in another Destiny video. Peace.